Gentlemen, welcome back to the Microwave Lab. Today we're going to be talking about the SWR meter on this old classic Micronta 3 range CB meter. And so the purpose of this video is not necessarily just about this meter, uh, but it's uh, more of a test of cheap SWR meters that you can that you can find. Uh, and so um, long and the short of it is that you can, if you really want to measure things like power and modulation, you really need an oscilloscope or more more sophisticated sophisticated equipment. I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but I really wanted to focus on SWR because there are a lot of cheap twenty thirty dollar SWR meters uh, out there, and I wanted to see if there's any uh, any merit to their accuracy. So uh, I, I figure this is pretty representative of those just for measuring SWR. So um, so if you're into radio, uh, you're probably familiar with SWR. So I'll just jump over here to talking about a little bit of the math and the theory. So SWR is a measure of the Load in, ratio of the load impedance to the characteristic impedance uh, and so if your load impedance is larger than your characteristic impedance in this case for for radio it's 50 ohms uh, characteristic impedance if your load is greater it's load impedance over characteristic impedance or if your load is smaller than its characteristic impedance over load impedance uh, and so this is the mathematical way to calculate it what I've, what I've done is, is I've set up a few uh, resistors here at different resistances or impedances uh, and we're going to measure them with the uh, micronta meter and we're going to compare that not only to the calculated value I have five resistors set up here but also to the sort of the letter of the law in in microwave measurements which is a, a, net, a two port network analyzer now this is set up in one port mode but this is a not a brand new network analyzer but it's a, it's a pretty nice modern one and they go for about fifteen thousand dollars now so this is like kind of like the holy grail and kind of the letter of the law in in microwave measurements, so what this does is it, it creates its own its own signal and sends it out out the wire and then measures the reflected power and then calculates SWR. So this isn't the only way to to uh, calculate SWR. The, if it's measured in a meter, it's usually measuring forward power versus reflected power, and there's a, a different equation for that. But that's how it's usually done. So right now I have it I have it connected to a um, to a 50 ohm termination, so you know we. I'll just jump over here. 50 ohms. We expect uh, 50 over 50 and SWR of one. So if we come over here to the network analyzer and I have a marker here, which we're measuring, and that's at 27.205 uh, megahertz or channel 20 on CB. And we come over here and we measure. We're looking at uh, SWR of 1.01 .01 or thereabouts, just about an SWR of one as we'd expect. So I, I repeated that for um, for all all five of these resistor values, and uh, I'll just come over here and show you another another one. Um, I'm going to grab this one. This is 150 ohms. So 150 divided by 50, we'd expect an SWR of 3. And that's just about what we get, 2.979 and change. So, um, so that's the uh, that's the gist of this. Like I said, I, I did all that already for the, um, the network analyzer. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the tripod in front of the SWR meter over here and then uh, run through these resistors and we'll see what the... Um, what the SWR setup is because it's a little bit it's a little bit cumbersome. I have to key the radio. And I have to run through the calibration really quickly, um, and so it's kind of hard to do uh, or almost impossible while holding the camera. So I'll run through them really quickly, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get set up here. So the test bench is all set up here, and the measurement procedure is first we switch the calibration needle or uh, switch down here to cal, and then we'll key up the radio and then uh, adjust the calibration knob until we the needle reaches the set position and then we flip the switch back up to SWR and that'll the needle will fall back to the SWR reading uh, and so it's not uh, not a complicated procedure but it's difficult to do uh, with just one hand so uh, set up the tripod so for, first we'll start off uh, with the uh, with the 50 ohm impedance so we um, 50 over 50 we'd expect a, an SWR of 1 so we'll uh, we've got it on cal set it and SWR and that falls right back down to one or just over one the resting position of the needle if I went inside the radio I could probably uh, adjust that needle back down to one for its resting spot but um, so I'm gonna mark down these values as we as we read them and then we can compare to the network analyzer at the end so next I'll jump up to uh, this is a 68 ohm and so the calculated SWR would be 1.36 68 over 50 so we'll cal and then we'll and it looks like it was just about 1.3, so I'll call that, or maybe a little bit more, I'll call that 1.31. Um, and I touched my other knob over here, that's no big deal. Um, so we'll switch over here to the 100 ohm. Cal, 
set, flip back, and we're looking about, I call that 1.92, um, and so the calculated on that, obviously 100 over 50 is 2, um, and next we have, I'm trying to keep the, next is 150 ohms, but I'm trying to keep these, these key ups for the test pretty short, because I have about a 6 watt dead key on this radio, so uh, I want, I, I could smoke these quarter watt resistors pretty quickly, they get pretty warm just after a few seconds, so I, I'm trying to keep them brief, so we'll cal. Actually, this meter's not. There we go. With a little bit of glare, so we'll cal and we'll switch, and we have about about three and change. I'll call that three flat. Um, and so the last last resistor is actually less than 50 ohms. We have a 30 ohm resistor. So, and, and if I didn't say say it already, 150 ohms divided by 50, we'd expect three, and that's just about what we got. Um, and so for 30 ohms, we flip the equation over and we have 50 over 30, which is a 1.67, so, or 1.6 repeating. So we'll cal and then, so we've got one point, I'll call that 1.72. Uh, so that's all for the measurements and we'll, uh, we'll reconvene and wrap this up. Alright, so now we can compare the uh, meter measured values with the network analyzer. So we'll start off with the 30 ohm here. We had a calculated of 1.67, network analyzer measured of 1.66, and the micrometer measured 1.72. Uh, 50 ohms, of course, we'd expect one. Network analyzer was just about one, and the micronta measured one, or one and changed the resting position of the needle. Um, so next is 68. We've got uh, expected of 1.36, network analyzer measured 1.42, and the micronta measured 1.31. And so the network analyzer is a little bit farther off than, it, than the other measurements, but uh, that could just be due to uh, the, um, the actual value of the resistor being a little bit different than the nominal. I didn't measure these with a, a uh, multimeter, so they might be off by a little bit. Um, and so next, uh, 100 ohms, we'd expect about 2, and that's, about, that's what we get on the Network analyzer, micronta, just a little bit off, 1.92, or you know whatever your interpretation of that needle movement was. And 150 ohms, we've got uh, expected three. Network analyzer measured just about three, and micronta was pretty much on three, maybe just a touch above. And so if you look at you look at these values, if you want to go calculate the percent error, you can do that. But these values are pretty darn good. So uh, you know I'm I'm speaking a little bit more in general than just to this meter, but I'd say that in general, if you're going to go, you want to go pick up an SWR meter to test out SWR in your car or however you're using your radio, I'd say, I'd say definitely, uh, definitely go for it. Uh, I was skeptical of these, uh, you know, these, these meters. And in fact, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this meter specifically right now is that the wattage, the wattage really isn't even close. I, I'm, I measured, um, both and the modulation, it's hard to measure, but uh, I'll talk about the wattage first, is that I, I measured the wattage um, about as well as I, I can, and probably the best way to do it is with an oscilloscope, and then you measure voltage, and then you calculate the wattage uh, or power, and um, and the, this micrometer isn't even close. So, you know, these these sort of standalone meters wouldn't really trust it for, for wattage. Modulation, I don't really have a good way to measure um, or to sort of like something like this to, to check modulation with where I could accurately compare to uh, to this meter or rather I can use my radio to generate uh, a signal but that's I don't really have the idealized setup for that so modulation is kind of a toss up the, the readings were just about consistent of, as when I measured modulation with a uh, with an oscilloscope which is the best way to do it um, and uh, I, I'll be making another video on that but just the qualitatively measured modulation was okay or it was close enough to what I was measuring, but that's not really a scientific way of, uh, of measuring it. But the SWR, as you can see, is, is close enough to, uh, to really get you started on, uh, on tuning an antenna. Uh, and so you can go watch other videos about specifically t tuning uh, an antenna and changing the length. But um, you know what, the, the, the thing to remember with SWR is that even if the micro, let, let's take the, um, uh, the 68 ohm uh, for example, you know, maybe, maybe the actual for that resistor was 1.42, but you're measuring about 1.3. If you make an antenna adjustment and this changes to 1.2, whereas it was, the, you know, maybe it was actually in reality 1.3, you still made an improvement to your SWR. So that's really what you're trying to do if you pick up a meter like this for $20, $30, $40, $40 just to get you going and just to start making adjustments, make sure your SWR isn't, isn't through the roof. So the, the exact values aren't critically important as it is the, just the relative measurements as you're making adjustments you want to make sure you're improving your SWR 
Uh, and so that's, that's uh, I guess, bottom line is that I wouldn't trust these, you know, these small sort of combo meters. A lot of, a lot of the ones I've seen are just SWR and power. Uh, you know, get a, get a cheapo that just has SWR, or maybe it has power as well, but I wouldn't trust the power measurements. At least this one isn't. Um, I'm not even going to make a video about it. It's not even not even worth it and uh, modulation is kind of a toss-up but you know what if you want to measure these things you want to uh, I don't know how to measure SWR on an oscilloscope but that's what your cheapo meter is for if you want to measure you know you want to step up and start measuring power and modulation you really have to invest in, the, in an oscilloscope it's it's a uh, really a good move put the money that you would spend on like a hundred dollar I think um, they're like dozy and power dynamics they're uh, a little over a hundred dollars for something similar to this it's a little bit bigger it measures more power um, but if you're gonna, if you're looking for something like that, just use that, put that money towards an oscilloscope. It, it'll measure, uh, it'll be more accurate, and it'll also have more capabilities. So, uh, so that's about about it for this. Uh, yeah, like I said, bottom line, SWR meter works well. So go go pick one up for yourself and uh, and start uh, screwing around with it. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.